have been a huge fan of TED Talks for many years. And I can quite comfortably say many of them have quite literally changed the way I behave. Some of you may have seen, for example, the 100 Days of Rejection project. What a wonderful project. It really has motivated me and deeply affected how I behave on a day-to-day -day basis. So of course it's only appropriate that I have very carefully prepared a short motivational speech for the start of my talk. Are you ready? You are not particularly special. I think you seem kind of lazy, you're a little bit greedy, uh, you look kind of selfish to me, uh, to be honest, kind of forgetful. I don't think you're very brilliant, and to be honest, you don't strike me as very creative. Now, I can see from some of the horrified looks I'm getting around the room, that sort of abusive approach is perhaps not what you were hoping for. But I hope that by the end of this talk, you would have thought, not only is it okay, but that's actually a very deeply motivating speech that I've just given. I'm going to prove that, hopefully, by giving a case study. And my case study starts at the end. At least the end according to Disney and Hollywood movies. And they lived happily ever after. Because so much of our effort is spent on getting into romance, getting into relationships, very little is based on the maintaining of romance, maintaining, keeping that fire going throughout the years, but I consider this to be a very serious problem. And as a boring person, as a doctor and as a uh, researcher, I of course take a data-driven approach to this. So with any uh, type of project, we're going to look at definitions first. So, how do we feel about romance? What exactly is romance? Well, if you go back one, please. It's a feeling of excitement and mystery associated with love. Okay, so this is our concept of romance. This is what we're going to build our data-driven plan for having marriages, a data-driven plan for sort of happiness with your partner on. But let's look now at these details. So, to get that feeling, you have to be spontaneous, thoughtful, attentive, caring, and empathetic. As, as I've already said, Many of you, to me, don't look very spontaneous. And in fact, I'm sure many of you have had the complaint. Oh, my partner's not spontaneous. So boring. I can always predict what he's going to do. He never surprises me. He or she never surprises me. And this is sort of a terrible thing. And I think this is absolutely true. But mostly because of biology. We as humans are not built to be spontaneous at all. We are habit-forming creatures. We live in a very busy world and we cope with this cognitive load by seeking patterns, doing the same thing time and time again. And that is how we cope with life. So when you say you're not spontaneous, it's not just you, it's all of us. None of us are particularly spontaneous. And if we look again at thoughtfulness as another example, thoughtfulness we are all quite forgetful. Humans forget things all the time. We live in an information-rich world where things are coming in and out. We need to save our cognition. It's so difficult to remember things. Is it any surprise that people will forget that important anniversary date, what your favorite food is, where you'd like to go for dinner? So these are the serious uh, problems that humans face when we're dealing with this kind of romance. But can we take a data-driven approach to overcome our biological limitations? Well, I think we can. And I'd like to observe this by first of all thinking about what exactly does, let's take one of them, spontaneity. What does spontaneity look like? For some of you, it may look like this. Oh, capturing the moment, that's a delightful sort of romantic approach. Uh, but to me as a scientist, that's not what I think of spontaneity. This is what spontaneity looks like. So this is mathematical spontaneity. On the left-hand side, we have this very predictable linear graph. You know at any given uh, interval, any given value, you can predict the outcome. Whereas on this side, the very beautiful looking uh, randomized slide there, that really is spontaneity. To me, that is what it looks like. So this is our model for romance. And no matter how boring you are, no matter how unspontaneous you are, we can use this to increase our romance. So let's take this in two examples. Spontaneity when and spontaneity what when it comes to dating. I'm going to look at spontaneity when first. So for you all, I'm sure you, for those of you in longer term relationships, you may fall into the trap, the evil trap I say, Friday date night, right? A few smiles around, so you know what I'm talking about. Friday date night, we're going to go and do dinner and a movie, nine times out of ten. We're going to go to one of four restaurants, which are our favourite, and we're going to see what a film Hollywood wants us to see that evening. So that is going to be our very fixed dating pattern. 
But by simple use of tools to overcome my patent biology, what we can see is we can use tools such as a simple calendar and a simple number randomizer, and what you get is this. You turn from date night fixed to random date night. Now this is just one form of randomization, and I think as you can see, it's very helpful. Imagine now you're, it's not me being spontaneous, it's just my calendar saying, hey, be spontaneous. And then you text, uh, my wife is here, and you text her and say, oh, meet me after work at the MTR for a surprise. Is it mysterious? Sure. A little bit surprising? Absolutely. Nothing to do with me? Absolutely nothing to do with me. And if any of you want to come and talk to me afterwards to confirm quite how boring I am, it really is. This has absolutely nothing to do with me whatsoever, but it's just the use of numbers. I can overcome my biology to be spontaneous. But that's spontaneous what? Let's take it a step further. Spontaneous, uh, spontaneous when? We're going to say spontaneous what? Now this is a model, this is my very simplified model for the, what I call the wife maintenance rotor, partner maintenance rotor. Uh, I'm going to take you through this rather slowly because this is quite important. Take each of these categories if you want to do something nice for your other half. An item that's needed, okay? You can, it's certainly nice to get someone something that they need, but of course if you do that all the time you come across as a bit of a handyman, don't you? If you get them something that they want, something glamorous, something flashy, it's very nice, it's very pleasing, but you come across as a little bit materialistic, don't you? On the other hand, if you go for the homemade every time, oh, it's very sweet. And also a little bit cheap sometimes. So this is why we have the rotor. The rotor allows you to take advantage and to keep the person guessing. And it's not even just romance for them or at them. It's romantic for me too. Because whenever I go, oh, I've got a next big event, the, the rotor system will give me an output, but then suddenly I think, oh, I wonder what I should do. And sticking with this slide, I'll tell you how we collect data on this particular method in order to keep going with the romance. And that is, you have to be an absolute data fiend. I collect data at the most inappropriate, most often times you would ever imagine. And I do this using a tool called Texting Gary. You, you may have other names for this. Essentially, I have no friends called Gary. So whenever my, my wife says something she likes, she sees something, this is lovely, oh, that looks rather nice. Did you see my friend posted here? I want to travel here. I want to read this and do that. I say, I'm going to text Gary. Of course, I'm not texting Gary, I'm just entering the relevant data into the information database. And I keep an electronic database known as the Wife Maintenance File. It's a little bit famous, it lives on, on the website. And it has all of these um, categories and items, all recommendations you can go for. Because I get busy. Because I'm quite forgetful. I don't know when I'm going to need to come up with something on the spot. So I don't have to. I dip into the Wife Maintenance File, pull up the next one on the list, and pop your ankle there. Nice and simple in terms of spontaneity. So here we have the basic romantic case study, and hopefully already you're seeing, no matter how limited you think you are, no matter how unspontaneous and unromantic you are, you can rise above it through the use of data and technology. But I'm going to take this even one step further and say, for those of you who think you're creative, or think creativity is a thing that people have, I hate people who think that. I think it's a total lie, because I think creativity is quite an illusion. We're going to go on to the next slide, I'm going to stick with the case study of romance. And I'm going to demonstrate to you, this is the, you know, we're sticking with romance, this is my uh, proposal. Now, um, it was quite a dramatic thing. From looking at this, it looks all very dramatic. However, I'd like to highlight to you one very important thing. When I say to you at the beginning, you're not special, I mean you're not special in gifts, but also your problems are not uniquely special. Lots of people have to propose to people and they want to do a good job. And therefore I think being creative doesn't start with me sitting in my room and thinking, oh I've got these great ideas and these ideas are going to be wonderful, they're going to somehow be brilliant and I'm going to somehow overcome mankind. I'm a researcher. The first thing when I encounter a problem is I see what's in the literature. The literature being, in this case, YouTube and Google Image. So I surf through hundreds, hundreds of other proposals just to see not only the numerical data, but what we call qualitative data, those descriptive underlying facets of what makes a romantic video actually romantic. And further than that, I, I need to get help. I realized that for myself, I'm quite limited in my own way. So I had so much help 
preparing this proposal. My best man actually took his day off to get set up. I liaised with every one of my wife's colleagues as to the dates when she would be available and all of these things. And in the end, we managed to get through uh, this surprising proposal, not through any creativity on my part, but mostly because of really hardcore research. And there was a song involved, I don't know, for some of you who are looking at this bit, and does it look familiar from Love Actually? You know, there's that scene in Love Actually, very romantic, and they do that. That's not me, I mean, that's obviously not me. That's not an original idea, but it's quite nice. So I sort of built it in, it has my own content, it's very specific. There's a giant panda that's bigger than my wife, you might wonder why. I don't have a great memory, but I looked through all of the data regarding all of the photos we'd ever done and memories, and one of our first dates was actually in Ocean Park, and we have a terrible photo of that, you know, that big panda that you stand next to in Ocean Park? These are all things that's research-based, and none of it at all is particularly creative. Now, my wife is sitting in the audience, <laughs> as I mentioned before, and you may wonder whether she thinks I'm terribly, terribly unromantic. I've, ta I've taken it to such an extreme level that I've killed the romance with the knife of science. You might think that. But I will say no. And I say no for two reasons. So going back to this image, I think number one, I think this is quite geeky, but I do quite like it. We always, I always like to think of it as our dates kind of come from the stars. They come from this constellation of randomness, the forces of nature that cannot be compelled from anything. So it comes from up above and we are given a date. It's not something that I come up with, it's sort of a destiny thing. And I think that's number one, that's why I think it's still romantic, even though she perfectly well knows this is exactly what I do. The second thing, and I think this is sort of really important too, is that actually all the physical things, the items, the trips, they are not the important thing of what I'm giving her. Because what I'm giving her, in fact, is the gift of time. And I think that is, in fact, the most romantic thing anyone can give to any person. And I don't mean that rubbish time where you grudgingly spend an afternoon with that person and say, fine, we'll go shopping together, and you go with them. Not that time, the good time, the quality time. And that doesn't need to be spent with them. It can be spent sitting by yourself, researching and thinking, how am I going to make this person happy? What special thing can I cook up? And I'm going to give them this time. And this is not just for romance, this is for your friends, your family, your colleagues, and everyone. And I think that, to me, is the most romantic thing. So to bring this back to my rather abusive beginning, I think you are not special, and I think you are a bit forgetful, a bit lazy, a bit greedy, and not that creative. And that is where the magic begins. Because once you start down that road, you say, I'm not special, I need to come up with solutions. You start, if you're like me, looking for the data, looking for the analyses, and hopefully driving yourself to make the world even more special, even though you're perfectly not special. Thank you very much.